Hey, welcome to our channel. We're so happy you're here. I'm Michelle, and this video on which monosaccharides have what effect on endurance performance, what they are, why they matter, and which ones are best during endurance sports. So you've probably heard the words simple sugars before, and perhaps when you hear these words, you think of things like white sugar, white bread, candy, or something found in sports drinks. Maybe some of you have heard or found from experience that simple sugars are essential to your own endurance performance but the specific ingredients listed on your endurance fuel package like glucose, fructose, dextrose, maltose, sucrose, and clarity on exactly what these are and how they relate to our endurance performance is a bit muddy. For others of us, we have a bit of a negative internal response to the words simple sugars because so many of us have heard the common claim that simple sugars are full of empty calories or that they are bad for our health in one way or another. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this video and then also in our upcoming videos on digestion and absorption. The next thing to know is that carbohydrates fall into one of two categories, simple or complex. Simple sugars is an umbrella term for both monosaccharides and disaccharides. Monosaccharides are the smallest unit of carbohydrates that cannot be broken down further in the gut. Monosaccharides are also small enough to pass through the wall of the small intestine and get absorbed in the bloodstream and provide fuel to the working tissues like your muscles and your brain. Disaccharides are just two monosaccharides stuck together with the help of an oxygen atom. Get subscribed to Alacrity Endurance so you don't miss our upcoming video on how to use specific disaccharides as training and racing fuel. Now in contrast to simple sugars, complex carbohydrates are categorized as any carbohydrate that involves three or more monosaccharides linked together. And you can check out Alex's maltodextrin video in our new playlist, Endurance Nutrition in 3 Minutes or Less. Monosaccharides generally have 3 to 7 carbon atoms, plus a bunch of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. In water, like your endurance hydration mixes, and like in our bodies, monosaccharides with 5 or more carbons often form ring-like structures. These rings have always kind of reminded me of a charm bracelet where the oxygen is the clasp and the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens hanging off are like the charms. There are several monosaccharides that are vital to physiological and biological functioning, but we're going to focus in on a few that are the most relevant to fueling and racing fast, and so that we can start to understand what all these words on these sport nutrition packages actually mean for our performance. We'll start with the least relevant and save the best and most important for last. Now, the first few monosaccharides that you might want to pay a little attention to are what we call epimers of glucose. This just means that the molecules are almost identical, except that a small part of the molecule is rotated in a specific way, and this orientation can completely change how the body interacts with them. In the case of glucose epimers mannose, ribose, allose, gulose, and xylose, and all the others that we're not mentioning, they're all absorbed at such low levels that they pretty much don't matter in endurance sport, and you likely won't find them in any of your products. If you do happen to see these on your product packages, you should probably start asking some hard questions. In the case of the glucose epimer galactose, the body can and does absorb it better than other glucose epimers. Awesome, so should we use it? Unfortunately, galactose is absorbed more than four times more slowly during exercise than its friend glucose. That means that during training or racing, your gut has to hold onto galactose and carry it around while it works on passing it to your bloodstream. And what happens when your gut has to hold onto things during training? Oh, you know, cramps, GI distress, all the other things, and probably blood sugar levels too low to support peak performance. Fructose is the second most important monosaccharide for endurance athletes to consider because it's the second most easily absorbed monosaccharide. If you were to consume fructose in isolation, you might only be able to consume 20 to 30 grams per hour during exercise without causing GI distress. But when fructose is consumed with glucose, it takes advantage of something called co-transport. Co-transport basically means that fructose goes along for a ride with glucose through your intestine walls and peacefully into your bloodstream faster and easier than it does on its own. The reason for this? It's GLUT2. GLUT2 is a fructose transporter protein in the gut that is normally the backup mechanism for getting fructose into your bloodstream because GLUT5 takes care of business most of the time. But when you intake a bunch of glucose with all your fructose, all of a sudden GLUT2 activates and you have a fructose superhighway in 
into your bloodstream and comfortably out of your gut. What that means is, is that endurance athletes can absorb and use more external fuel during exercise while avoiding GI distress and allowing good fluid absorption for hydration. If you want to know just how much carbohydrate you should consume during exercise, you can check out our video on how much carbohydrate to go faster. Now for the most important monosaccharide. Glucose is a six carbon monosaccharide that is the most important for maximizing your endurance performance. That's because it's everywhere and it's the most easily absorbed by the intestines. Not only that, but in small doses, it helps with sodium absorption and certainly helps pack in maximum carbs per hour when paired with fructose. Glucose is your body's preferred fuel source, not only for your working muscles, but also for other tissues like your brain and is the form of sugar that is regulated in the blood to prevent blood sugar spikes and crashes. Your body likes it so much that fructose and galactose monosaccharides are converted to glucose in the liver. So if glucose and fructose are the two primary monosaccharides I should be consuming during training, how much of each is best? Is it really 30 grams fructose and 60 grams glucose? How do I get that in my actual beverage if the company doesn't say on the label? Glucose may not be the very best option for actually getting glucose into your bloodstream during exercise. That famed two to one glucose to fructose ratio is about on its last legs. We'll put that to the test in our upcoming video on the glucose fructose ratios, why it matters, if it's even a real ratio. For now, targeting somewhere between two to one and one to one glucose to fructose in your workout fuel is probably optimal. If you are looking to consume glucose, you should actually be looking for the word dextrose. Why? Dextrose is just what glucose is called when it's outside the body. As soon as it passes your lips, it's magically glucose. Long chains of glucose stored in your muscles and liver are called glycogen. Outside the body, similar strands are called any number of things from maltodextrin to highly branched cyclic dextrin, all of which would come in handy for those long endurance races and training sessions. And you've probably seen a few of those words on your nutrition labels. Usually, if it has the word dex in the word, it's a pure glucose source and it's handled very similarly to glucose by your GI tract. Very quickly, I wanted to note that for those of you that have heard that simple sugars are bad for your health, don't worry. While yes, it is true that consuming most of your calories from simple sugars may increase risk of developing health complications like type 2 diabetes, obesity, and heart disease, the body actually responds to simple sugars differently during and immediately after exercise. Consuming simple sugar during exercise thankfully does not reduce insulin sensitivity like it would on a chronic high simple sugar diet while not exercising. Likewise, muscle cells are able to more easily absorb carbs during exercise meaning that fat cells absorb less. Alex is going over a recent landmark meta-analysis on the food-first approach to fueling endurance training. Get subscribed to our channel to find out if all these processed carbs are really worth it or if there's a healthier way to fuel your races and training. If you have any topics you'd like to see us cover in a video, please share them with us in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.